Bringing 262 Heavy, wind calm, runway 31 left, clear for takeoff, caution weight turbulence, previous departure, Heavy uh, 777. Hello and welcome aboard our XB-70 Valkyrie. North American XB-70 Valkyrie to be exact. We have a sort of virtual cockpit. There we go. We have a virtual cockpit of sorts. Um, we don't have any chairs apparently, so we're standing. That's that's the way they, they flew these planes. That's accurate. Not at all. Okay. Uh, few buttons seem to work. Not even the, not even the, that's nice. So, nothing really works in this guy. Okay, well, that's whatever. Okay. So, the XB-70 is a large, large, six-engine bomber. It was designed to fly at Mach 3 plus, above 70,000 feet. Designed in the mid 1950s to avoid interceptors. Now, if you remember, if you go back to my B1A discussion, originally aircraft were designed for high altitude bombing runs, and that was because interceptors couldn't get up in time if you were high and fast. But then high altitude surface to air missiles were introduced, and that caused problems because now these big fast planes had to fly down low close to the to the Earth, and they're just not designed for that, and they actually flew about as fast as a B-52, so why replace a B-52 with something expensive? And then they introduced intercontinental ballistic missiles, and so this plane was deemed to be not necessary any longer. Now, originally, when this aircraft was... when this original specs were launched about for this aircraft, it was to be a cruise and dash airframe. Meaning that it would cruise at subsonic speeds up to a point and then they drop any extra tanks and then dash at supersonic speeds in to drop their nuclear bomb. Well then new engines, new engine technology came out and increased knowledge around supersonic design led to what you see here which was an all supersonic design. It's built largely of stainless steel, titanium, honeycomb panels throughout. And interestingly, it uses compression lift. So this, this wedge here creates a compression lift. It creates a, a, a shock wave below the aircraft. It actually increased lift by 5% just with that compression lift. Now, unlike other aircraft, you see our, our wings are drooped. That's not what, how they would be. I actually discovered it is flaps. Aha! Here we go. So she would have taken off like this. Unique for large aircraft that these that the wings were hinged. They were hinged to go down up to 65 degrees as you saw. And it increased directional stability at supersonic speeds. It shifts the center of gravity back. And it strengthens the compression lift effect. Because when those were down. You can see how a, a bubble of shockwave would actually be trapped between the, the engine area and the wing to create a compression wave, a shockwave. This aircraft actually surfed its own shockwave, basically. Despite it going Mach 3, at the leading edges of the wings, it was actually at subsonic speeds because of the way that it surfed its own shockwave. All right, let's get those wings back up. Oh wow, now you're nice and loud in here. Alright. Let's take these off. Let's actually go to an outside view for this takeoff. Full. Full? Hello? Oh, we, we see our airspeed increasing down there. And our gallons per hour of fuel usage. Go. We're at 90 knots. We're at Dayton Air Base, coincidentally. Um, well, not coincidentally. We're at Dayton Air Base because the last remaining XB-70 is located at the United States Air Force Museum in Dayton. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Get our landing gears up. Look at that twist and retract on those rear gears. Nice. Alright, we're going to go ahead and 
get rid of flap. I've noticed that there's flap on the front winglet as well. So we're going to go ahead and go into a clean but droop. Look at that. It's a nice looking aircraft. I, I am disappointed there's no afterburner on it. The engine doesn't sound very strong. Um, but, you know, we're, we're flying. Alright, we're going we're gonna to head for the skies. It, it just doesn't... Okay, we got six General Electric YJ93-GE3s producing 19,900 pounds of thrust dry and 28,800 pounds of thrust after burning. And look at our speed. It's just creeping up about as fast as you would expect a civilian jetliner like a 757 to go. It's, it's not impressing me at all. Also, what's not impressing me is this virtual cockpit. Anyway, um, we're going to come off those engines a little bit because we are going to try to make a landing back at Dayton. <laughs> that ought to be funny. Um, so it flies at Mach 3.1, or could fly at Mach 3.1, and at a 4,288-mile range on her. She had plenty of range. She could go long stints in afterburning. Uh, where do we think our airbase is that we just took off from? I think that's it right there. Okay. Cool. Alright. Now let's uh, go with uh, shift one. Wow, really? Uh, huh. That's an interesting, interesting 2D cockpit. Uh, shift two. Good. We can line up on our runway. Let's cut our engines all the way. Shift three, nothing. Shift four, oh no, shift three is supposed to be a radio stack. Just doesn't appear. That's awesome. All right, so let's see, does she have air brakes? Yes, she does, right there. Look at that. Okay. Can we make that landing? I don't think so, but we're gonna try anyway because that's what we do. We force landings. All right, we're. Air brakes are out. Okay, you can hear the flaps come out. Okay, good. Let's put the gears out. Let's validate that they're down. They are down indeed. Good. Okay, we're gonna go for this landing. What? Oh, airspeed. Engines are spooling, maybe. There they go. No. Oh, this isn't going to be good. Come on, baby. Come on. Come. We're going to land as a helicopter lands. See, it's a helicopter. Didn't they tell you? Helicopter landing! Dope. Alright, we're back on the runway. Well, that was fun. So we tried to land. I tried to line it up. I was so busy paying attention to that. I didn't pay attention to the airspeed. Anyway. Um, what do I think of this aircraft? Well, so a couple of things. One, I don't think I can actually shut her down. Like, I've tried, but they don't... The, the things that are supposed to shut her down don't actually work. Um, apparently the main exit is open. But where that main exit might be... I don't know. Um, this is a convert from Flight Simulator 2009. I mean, look, you can look into it. There's no actual engine in there. It's just fake. Um, yeah, let's, let's actually... Let's go. Can we, can we roll? There we go. Um, so what do I think? Uh, I think it's missing a lot. I mean, the cock, the 2D cockpit is not all that pretty. It's missing engines in the uh, in the engine bay. It needs more modeling help. But if you're looking for an XB70, then um, here is one. I mean, it's it's neat that it has the the actioning wingtips, which are very accurate to the aircraft. Um, 
I think that's cool. But does it have the whole package? No, I don't think it does. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't have the feel of an aircraft that can go Mach three. So, unfortunately, I don't think this XB seventy really meets what we're looking for in a great flight simulator X mod. We're gonna stop her right there. Oh, look at that! It's almost like a display pose. <laughs> oh wow, that's loud. Um, that's a weird angle. All right. So there we go, this is the XB-70. The link is down below. It's a neat aircraft to see in person. I've been to Dayton, I've seen it in person, I've stood underneath it. It's a really neat aircraft to look at. This model really needs help, it needs a lot of help, I think. But if you need an XB-70 to really feel complete in Flight Simulator X, here you go. Here's one to give a try of. Until next time, bye.